What's up, everybody? This is your boy Uber Hikari, aka the Nerd Nigga, here to bring you another video with no frills, just the analysis. And today I'm going to be bringing you my YouTube anime community discussion video. And everybody else has been putting up their videos, so I figured, why not me? And why, why, why not be the person who tells everybody in the YouTube anime community to just shut the fuck up? Seriously, shut the fuck up. Every couple of months, this topic comes up, the YouTube anime community this, YouTube anime community that, and every time, I gotta, I gotta hear the same shit over and over and over again. And actually, the last time this, this YouTube anime community discussion topic came up, I had been meaning to put out a video then, but I just never got around to it. So I figured this time, I'm definitely going to tell you guys to shut the fuck up. Seriously. You, you got to stop the complaining, the bitching, the whining, the moaning. You got to stop it. And I'm here to break down, because you know, I'm the nerd nigga. I, all I do is just the analysis. I'm here to break down precisely why it is that the YouTube anime community is the way it is. And I want to touch on three things. The first is diversity. Got to touch on this last time I'm ever going to say this because it seems like everybody wants to put in their two cents, but nobody understands what the fuck is really going on. So I got to do that. Diversity. Then I got to talk about the hierarchy in the YouTube anime community. <sighs> really, guys? Y'all complaining about the hierarchy? Seriously? Then I got to talk about what it means to be a fan and what it means to be a fan of anime and manga because one thing I noticed is that a lot of people don't even know what it means to be a fan of the shit they claim to be a fan of. How, 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 <laughs> how awkward is that? You claim to be a fan of something, and you don't even understand what it means to be a fan of it. Really awkward situation. So first, let's talk about diversity. So, here's what the problem is. Basically, the larger YouTube anime community does not value diversity. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows that we don't value diversity. I, I won't I won't put myself in there because I have made steps towards making my channel as diverse as it could possibly be. And some other YouTubers have as well. But that's basically the problem is that most of the people who make up the YouTube anime community, and this is true for the people who produce the YouTube videos and for the people who consume the vi vi videos, in other words, view them, we don't. As a larger community, we just don't value diversity. And most big-time reviewers don't value diversity. They don't take active steps to diversify their content. And if they do, it's not very often. You see some people like Code Provider does it. He does a really good job of it. The Insane Game Freak does a good job of it. King of Lightning sometimes. But most of his content is still the big three related and a lot of other popular shows. So that's the basic problem. But why is that the problem? Everybody agrees that that's the problem, but it seems like nobody understands precisely why that's the problem. So why is it the case that the community doesn't value diversity the way a lot of people think we should? Why? There's no incentive to diversify your content. <laughs> it's basically literally that simple. Big reviewers don't need to diversify their content in order to continue to gain big views. They don't need to. The YouTube anime community is composed of two parts. And I've been saying this basically since my very first video. It's composed of, one, the producers of the content, the people who upload the videos, like myself, and two, the people who consume the content, the people who view the videos, the people who subscribe to you. And the YouTube anime community is basically... An economy. And I don't mean an economy in the sense that it's about money or finances, although that's a part of it. I mean it's a it's an economy in the most basic way possible, which is simply that the YouTube anime community is made up of the basic laws of supply and demand. The consumers want reviews of the most popular anime and manga, and that's to be expected. They want they want to see the most popular stuff. They want to see the stuff that they want to see, the things that they like, which happens to be the six biggest shows right now. One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, Hunter x Hunter, Fairy Tail, and on some occasions, Hitman Reborn. So these are what you could say 
These are the shows that are in demand. The shows that most people gravitate towards and the shows that most people want to see the reviewers review. And what happens is people think that if they review these shows that are in such high demand, they'll get big time views. And this pretty much happens all the time. The community is now oversaturated with people who review nothing but Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, Fairy Tale, Hitman Reborn, and Hunter x Hunter. So literally, there is no incentive to diversify your content. What does this mean? This means that it's not profitable to diversify your content. And by profitable, I mean you won't get subs or it's not that you won't get subs, but you're not as likely to get as many subs as people who review popular stuff. If you decide not to review those things, you won't get as many views. And what's important to a lot of people is you won't get any money from it. It's literally not worth it to take your time and to review something that you know will only get you maybe 100, 200 views when you can take the same amount of time and review something that'll get you two or 3,000 views. Simple. Simple laws of supply and demand. Now, is this a bad thing? And most people in the community tend to agree that this is a bad thing. I also think this is a bad thing. But, and, and, and basically here's why. It's a bad thing because it creates a conformist community. It makes it so that everybody will copy everybody else. I mean, just go to YouTube and type in Naruto chapter reviews. And you'll see 50, 100, 200 people all reviewing the same stuff. On the other hand, type in Yu Yu Hakusho. Nobody's reviewing that. And if they are, then maybe you know, one, two people... Here and here, you might see a couple <laughs> discussion videos about it, but not really. Look up um, some seinen stuff. Berserk, even Berserk, which is insanely popular. There's not even a lot of people reviewing that. Vagabond, Vinland Saga. Nope. What do you see? Naruto chapter reviews. It's literally hundreds of them. It's, the community is oversaturated with them. And what happens? We become a conformist community. And as a result, there's no creativity, only blind followers. And what happens when you have a bunch of people reviewing the same thing, all vying for the same number of views? You get a crab in the bucket mentality. So when JP Mixia starts complaining about how, oh, nobody wants to help anybody else and, and nobody else wants to, to talk about some of the other people who are on the fringes, it's a crabs in the bucket mentality. What do you expect? You're in competition with the other person. They're not going to try and bring you up. The, the name of the game is to eliminate. I mean, if you really want to think about it in the economic sense, the name of the game is to eliminate the competition. That's the name of the game. The name of the game is not to help this other person. It's to make it's to build yourself up. And this creates basically a snowball effect. The more popular a show is, the higher demand there will be for that show. The higher demand there is for a show, the more people who are going to want to review it to capitalize on its on its popularity. The more people who want to popul who want to capitalize on its popularity, the more conformist the community is. And the more conformist the community is, means that this is the only thing that will be out there or it'll be the majority of the stuff that's out there. And when people come to the YouTube anime community, that's what they're likely to see, and as a result, they'll want to see more of the same thing. So you create conformity, and you create a crabs-in-the-bucket mentality. And so it's just a feedback loop. It's a cumulative effect. That's basically what the problem is. And if you have a whole bunch of people who think that the model for success on YouTube is to be like Sawyer 7 Mage, or to be for Neverworld, or to think that they'll be the next Sawyer 7 Major or be the next for Neverworld, then this is what you're going to get. And this is, this is basically the gist of it. And so you can't get mad when you're not successful. You can't say to yourself, I'm going to copy other people, even though there's a thousand other people who are doing the same shit I'm doing. I'm going to copy them and expect to be successful. And then when you're not successful, put up all this, oh, the anime community is so shitty. Oh, the, nobody wants to help out anybody else in the anime community. This is what you're going to get. Everybody doing the same shit equals crabs in the bucket. That's pretty much what it is. 
And that's precisely, that's one of the reasons why when I started my own channel, I said that the majority of the content on my channel would not be Big 3 oriented. It has nothing to do with not liking the Big 3, not reading the Big 3, not watching the Big 3. Is that I don't want to be a part of that crabs in the bucket mentality doing the same exact thing that the person next to me is doing. Didn't want to go through that. And so what the popular people need to do if they want to change the community is they need to diversify their content to make space, to make it possible for other types of channels to exist. And this was one thing that I never, I never understood. What's the point? And right now I'm directly calling out Sawyer 7 Mage, even though he's got me boxed and even though that's my homie, got to call you out. What's the point of having 10, 20, 30,000 subscribers and you review One Piece of Naruto? You have the power to influence a whole range of topics. And yet the only thing on your channel is One Piece and Naruto. Why is that? It can't. I mean, I hope it's not that, that One Piece and Naruto is the only thing you watch or read. I mean, that would be kind of tragic if that was the case. So I, I, I don't think it's that. And even if you didn't want to review different types of things on a regular basis, all you need to do is talk about one different show every month. That's all you need to do to create just a little bit of diversity. But most of the big channels won't do that. And another thing I noticed is that for Neverworld, for example, when he first started out, he used to do a whole range of reviews. In fact, when he first started out, he, he had a video about why Shoujo was better than Shonen. And now, the only thing he's reviewing, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, Hitman Reborn, uh, I think he might be reviewing Fairy Tale too, but that's it. So, so you have to ask yourself the question, why does a person who starts off with a diverse channel all of a sudden narrow their interests? Because it's more profitable to do it that way. That's the basic reason why. And it's not just for Neverworld. Most of the people in the YouTube anime community do it that way. And so it's always going to be harder for people who don't review the most popular stuff because the stuff they review won't be in demand. And another thing you can't do is you can't set out to not review the most popular stuff and then complain when you don't become successful on YouTube. Stop it. Seriously. You can't cry and you can't can't you can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Now let's talk about the hierarchy within the YouTube anime community. A, a recent addition <laughs> to a, a recent variation on this topic of the YouTube anime community. Very awkward. Is there a hierarchy in the YouTube anime community? Yes, but who gives a fuck? Who cares? There's always going to be a hierarchy. When you go out to buy a computer, the only people in the game are Microsoft and, Microsoft and Apple, and there's some Linux machines, but who the fuck cares <laughs> about Linux. I mean, uh, no offense if you, you have a Linux machine, but those are the only name. In, that's it. Those are the only names in the game. There's always going to be a hierarchy no matter what you do. So I don't understand this whole there's a hierarchy in the YouTube anime community and I'm, I'm mad because I'm at the bottom of the hierarchy. Uh, who gives a shit if you're mad? <laughs> the world doesn't conform to the way you want it to be. That's just That's just life. That's just facts. That's just the way it is. Oh, and wh why is there a hierarchy? And it's basically a hierarchy for the reasons that you would expect. Most people don't get to the top by being good reviewers. They get to the top by reviewing the most popular shit. And this is not the case 100% of the time, but the biggest factor that will determine your popularity is what you decide to review. Because if you decide to review the manga aphorism, most of you who are watching this video don't even know what the hell aphorism is. But if you decide to review aphorism, you ain't getting no views. On the other hand, if you decide to review Naruto, then it's much more likely, not guaranteed, but it's much more likely that if you do become successful, it will be because you decided to review Naruto rather than aphorism. That's just the way it is. Supply and demand. So it doesn't have anything to do with how hard you work. Not whether people like you, not whether people like your videos, not whether or not you're a good reviewer. These things matter, but they don't matter as much as what you decide to review. That's just the way it is. And like I said, it's not the case 
for 100% of the people, like Giga, for example. It's not true in his case, but generally speaking, it's true. And so it's not a coincidence that for Neverworld and Sawyer Severin Mage have the biggest channels. Because if you look at the similarities between them, they're basically they're practically mirror images of each other. Practically mir mirror images of each other. And so it's not a coincidence that the most popular channels are big three oriented channels or tend to focus on Fairy Tale, Hunter x Hunter, or Hitman Reborn. Just that simple. Now I gotta address this fan nonsense. Because a lot of people just go off the deep end when they start talking about I'm a real fan and you're a fake fan and, 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 and I support the industry and blah 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 all that other bullshit and nonsense. First of all, let me just address this right quick. This true fan versus fake fan bullshit nonsense. There's no such thing as a true anime fan. I said this before, I'll say it again. There is no such thing as a true anime fan. You cannot give yourself brownie points <laughs> because you consider yourself <laughs> to be a true anime fan. Nobody gives a fuck, personally. No, I mean, it's just, it's just the way nobody cares if you think you're a true anime fan. I mean, and, and if you think that you're a true anime fan, then ask yourself this. Are there people who are fake anime fans? Do you believe that? That you're a true anime fan and that there are these other people over there who are fake anime fans? Really? I, I mean, I seriously hope you don't believe that. That's number one. Number two, most people are not anime and manga fans anyway. I'm not an anime and manga fan. I've never described myself that way. Nobody has a, can ever say, hey, Uber Hikari, I heard you describe yourself that way. No, you haven't. I've never claimed that. I am not an anime and manga fan. And I'll explain that. Most people are fans of most people. Not all, but most people. A good majority of people are fans of a particular series. For example, they're Naruto fans, or they're One Piece fans, or they're fairy tale fans. Therefore, most people don't have a stake in diversity because they're not anime and manga fans to begin with. It's not that they're not true anime fans or that they're fake anime fans. It's that they're not anime and manga fans to begin with. What does it mean to be a fan of something? To be a fan of something means that you're an ardent admirer or devotee of something. That's what it means to be a fan. Look it up in a dictionary. That's the definition that you'll get. And, and this is something that most people do not understand when it comes to anime and manga. First of all, animation is a medium. Now, within a medium, you can it can branch off into modes, something that's called a mode. So you have American animation, that's a mode of animation. Or you can have Japanese animation, that's a mode of animation. That's all under the umbrella of animation. Japanese animation is known as anime, der. Um, but within, but within Japanese animation or anime is very interesting because within that mode of Japanese anime, there are certain demographic categories that do not exist in American animation. So a demographic category would be shonen, seinen, jose, um, what's the other one? Shoujo. Those are demographic categories. Now, some people like to claim that those are genres. I tend to disagree. They're not genres. There are some stylistic similarities between manga that all exist under the category shonen, but they're not j genre similarities. They're, they tend to be stylistic similarities because they're targeted towards the same demographic. Now, within a demographic category like shonen, seinen, jose, shoujo, you have genres and subgenres or across. So you can have a comedy that's shonen, but you can also have a comedy that's shoujo, for example. So genres and subgenres exist within and across demographic categories. Now, to be an anime and manga fan means that you appreciate anime and manga of many different demographic categories and of many genres and subgenres. It means that you have a very broad appreciation for what can be described as anime or Japanese animation. That's not true of most people. 
you it's very rare that you'll find a person unless they happen to be an otaku for example it's very rare that you'll find a person who likes jose shoujo shonen seinen yaoi yuri and all of it that's very very rare most of us are simply not fans of anime and manga broadly speaking they tend to be like me they're fans of a particular demographic category like shonen or seinen or shoujo or jose or they tend to be fans of particular genres for example I am not a fan of shonen slice of life. Not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of any slice of life, <laughs> to be honest. I'm a fan of shonen action adventure mangas, of seinen action adventures. That's what I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of particular genres, of particular demographic categories. And that's what most people tend to be. That's what most of us are. It doesn't mean we're not true fans. It just means we're not anime and manga fans. It just means we're fans of particular categories and particular genres. Again, I'm not an anime and manga fan. Now, here's where people tend to get really, really confused. People tend to believe that what makes them a true anime fan is the fact that they'll go out and buy anime or they'll go out and buy manga. No, that doesn't make you a true anime fan. It may make you a supporter of the anime industry, but your your level of economic support has no bearing on whether or not you're a fan of something. Uh, for example, I like the Baltimore Ravens. I'm a fan of the Baltimore Ravens. I don't buy, I don't go to any Baltimore Ravens games. I probably wouldn't even if I could. Even if I lived in Baltimore, I probably wouldn't. And I don't own any memorabilia, any sports mem memorabilia of the Baltimore Ravens. Does that mean I'm not a fan of the Baltimore Ravens? Of course not. I'm a fan of the Baltimore Ravens. I just don't support them economically. See what I'm saying? So you can be a supportive fan or you can be a non-supportive fan. But you can't be a fan because you support something. It doesn't make sense. Because you don't economically support something. That simply doesn't make sense. So it's because people are fans of particular demographic categories, genres, and of series. And this is another thing that people don't seem to get. If you only watch Naruto, you're not an anime fan or a manga fan. You're not even a fan of shonen. You're not even a fan of action adventure anime and manga. You're a Naruto fan. <laughs> if Naruto is all you like and that's all you watch and or read, that makes you a Naruto fan. That's it. That's that's all you can claim to be. Can't claim to be a larger fan of shonen anime and manga or action adventure anime and manga. You can't claim that because simply not true. Um, and what I find, what I found about this anime community is that when people say support the industry. What they generally mean is support the big three. And I've pointed this out before in the past. They don't really mean support the entire anime and manga industry. And that's something that to a certain extent, at least not if, if not economically, that we shall all have a hand in doing because the anime and manga industry is completely integrated. So that if one part of it fails, then another part is likely to fail. Um, but when people say support the industry, what they really mean is support the big three. Hey, support the most popular shit. All that other popular shit? Don't talk about that. Don't don't discuss that. We're, we're not interested in aphorism over here. Don't buy don't buy volumes of aphorism. That's generally what people tend to mean. And and like I said, the major problem with the YouTube anime community is that it's there is a built-in deterrence for diversity. Because it's it's not pro profitable, and and instead of being creative, being innovative, trying to get people to to think outside the box or change their taste, most people in the YouTube anime community, most people, even the biggest people in the YouTube anime community, are content to have a bunch of followers behind them, and that's the biggest problem. So now that we got that out the way, please shut up, stop complaining. If you're not willing to put in the time and effort to make the kind of videos that you want to see in the YouTube anime community, shut up. 
You have no dog in the fight. You're just a complainer. And I personally don't want to hear that. So, this was your boy Uber Hikari, a.k.a. The Nerd Nigga. Just brought you another video with no frills, just the analysis. Peace and have a blessed day.